this week on the 3D Printed Soup, I'm going to try and connect this old printer to this old gaming laptop. That's right after this. Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. I like messing around with 3D printers and getting them to do all kinds of interesting stuff. And I was thinking the other day, you know what? What happens if I run out of SD cards or what happens if the SD card reader on my PC suddenly stops working? Well, the Ender 3 has a USB mini, not micro, a mini. So that's kind of like the older, smaller USB connection uh, right on the front of it, which is for outputting and inputting. And I thought, hey, I've got this old gaming laptop. Don't use it much anymore. I wonder if I can set it up as actually a proper printing laptop. So I had a dig around in my cupboards, found the right cables, connected the two together, and I'm going to see if I can't get it to print directly from the laptop so I don't have to worry about running around the place, plugging stuff in, taking stuff out again. And if this works, I might even get myself one of the Creality boxes, which basically is a little Wi-Fi box you can get for your Creality printers that lets you sort of network more wirelessly. So I'm going to try do it cable first, and if this works, then the next step is getting ourselves a Wi-Fi network around here to basically connect all my 3D printers together in one 3D printed wireless network. Oh good god, you can smell the stench of geek a mile away. It's going to be great. Imagine that, having my phone at work and being able to turn printers on and off and set up prints and stop them, and then panic when I can see one on fire, not knowing what to do. I wonder if you can get a fire extinguisher on Wi-Fi. That may actually be something I need to buy. But anyway, I digress. Before we go on, however, thanks to everyone who has liked and subscribed. There's absolutely thousands of you now, which is absolutely incredible. It's lovely being part of this wonderful 3D printed community. I can connect you all with cables and we can all be one big Borg-like Wi-Fi 3D printed connection. Oh, the wonders of the future. Anywho, let's get on and make a wired 3D printer connection and see how well that works. As well as anything else does on this channel, I imagine. Let's give this a try. Okay, this is my oldest basic Ender 3, and this is my old, uh, I think it's an Asus um, gaming laptop, and it's a Nitro. Um, I've had it for quite some time, and it's done me very, very well, but uh, I haven't been using it recently, so I thought, you know what, let's find a practical use for it. So I'm going to sit here next to the uh, Ender 3 and get it to basically run my. Uh, oh, Try not to bash the power cables in. Uh, try and get it to run my uh, 3D printers. So first of all, let's get this thing set up and plugged in. Uh, the Ender 3 here has uh, two ways of inputting um, G-code. Uh, you can either do it via a SD card or you can use a uh, wire connection to it. It's USB. So I'm going to download Cura on this uh, laptop and then get it to basically run my printer straight over the USB connection and not have to worry about running between the two and putting in SD cards, taking SD cards out because SD card um, readers and drives do eventually wear out and this one is probably seven or eight years old by now and yeah it's starting to show its age a bit so maybe using it uh, as a permanent wire connection is a much better idea than unplugging and plugging back in um, SD cards every five seconds. So, let's go on and see if we can't download Cura and get this done. Right, with Cura downloaded and installed, let's start it up for the first time and let's try a fairly simple uh, print for the first uh, USB connection. Just wait for this to start up. While that's doing that, let's get the printer and the uh, laptop all plugged in and uh, get the uh, wire connection up and going. Okay, skip this nonsense. Don't need that. Here we go. Alright, make sure this is all working. Yeah, there's the uh, print bed and yeah, we can scoot it around. So yeah, that's all absolutely fine and dandy. Right, first thing we need is the cable. Uh, it's a fairly short one because I've only got one very short um, mini USB. Not many things use mini USB these days. I think the last thing I used it for was a PS3 pad. That's back in the day. So plug that into the port on the front of the Ender 3. I'm going to thread it under the control panel here so we don't get cables going everywhere. 
plug it into the USB 3 port on the side of my um, Acer laptop. I said Acer Solia, that was incorrect, it's an Acer Nitro 3 I think. And yep, let's try and find the connection. There we Oh no, that's the USB. Ah, there we go. Okay, it lights up already. Turned it on. And let's see if this thing picks it up. Let's see what we've got here. Well, an extra option is turned up at the top, so there we go. Yay! Okay. So Right, what we're we gonna print out first. Okay, I've gone for the simplest of uh, all prints, and that is the uh, absolute modern day classic, which is the 3D Benchy Boat. Everyone knows the Benchy Boat. It's what you print out on your printer to make sure that uh, your bed's leveled and that you're getting the right level of detail. And here it is in all its simple 3D glory. I love this little print. I must have printed a couple of hundred of these things out in my time. But yeah, it's a really good way of testing to make sure you're all set up right. Right, with that all set up, let's go over some settings. Slice. It should be a couple of hours print. Oh, hour and 40 minutes. And okay, option, print from USB. And with that, we have the monitor option pop up. And this shows that you've connected to the uh, USB connection on the front of your printer and that you can control it uh, from your laptop or, or uh, computer. Uh, let's just screw it over here a little bit. Uh, so you can see we have got the temperatures there. Always useful. Uh, we've got the build plate temperatures about 35. The nozzle is... Uh, or extruder soil is at 28 degrees C. Okay, let's give the print a click and see what happens. Well, here's how I've got it set up. Got print on the left, got the laptop on the right. So if it looks a bit stretched out, I'm using a wide angle lens so I can get the whole thing in and we can see both working at the same time. And yeah, not a bad looking setup. It just sits there nicely on top of my bookcase and uh, I can just let it run uh, the benchy from here. Okay, so on with the print. Okay, now it's up to temperature. This should kick off any second. Most boring part of all 3D prints, waiting for this to actually heat up. Ah, and there we go. So, yep, we'll start off with the introductory line all along the left-hand side of the print just to make sure the nozzle's not blocked and make sure the extruder's working. And back down again and now to start with the print proper. Okay, it's a terrible start. The uh, first layer has not adhered. I think it's probably because I moved the printer and then didn't level the bed. Amateur mistake. Always level your bed. So, here we go. Turn it off. Do I want to start to restart it? Yes, I do. And there we go. I have turned off the print directly from the laptop, not to touch the printer at all. So, that's another useful thing we can do. I'll just remove the uh, 3D printed junk and all the nasty stuff from the nozzle. And we shall start again. Also, I'm restarting Cura just to make sure that uh, everything is up and running properly. Okay, I'll come back to you in a sec once I have cleaned the printer and restarted the print. Okay, with the bed level properly, this should print out a lot better. Yeah, and it's already looking better. There's no weird curve at the start of it and none of the filament is coming off the print bed. So yeah, if you ever move your printer, always make sure you level your bed because it just moves everything around and it's just looking a lot neater and it's printing lovely. Okay, let's zoom over to the laptop and see what it's telling us about this print while we are making it. 
Uh, just a quick aside, uh, a lot of places will tell you that basically if your computer goes into sleep mode or if um, the monitor um, or screen or laptop shuts down in the middle of print, it stops the print. Uh, as you can see in a second here, um, my monitor went into uh, sleep mode and had no detrimental effect on the print whatsoever. But uh, your mileage may vary with that. It depends how you've got it set up. I suppose if you actually went into proper sleep mode, it would stop the print. But just going into hibernation like this doesn't seem to be a problem as the screen's gone off, everything's fine. Print is still going ahead and I'll just basically give it a quick nudge in a second. Monitor will come back on and it hasn't affected the print in the slightest. But as I say, your mileage may vary on this. I'm not sure how other laptops work. Just this one seems to uh, cope with it admirably. So that's a nice thing to know that I can leave this without having to change any of the power settings and the printer will keep printing um, no matter what. While we're doing a quick time lapse here, just a quick note on housekeeping. Um, this uh, 3D printer had been in my garage for about six months. Hadn't used it in quite some time because I've got uh, the couple of Ender 3 Pros, um, an Ender 3 Pro Max, and also uh, the new um, S1, which is uh, the latest version of the Ender 3. So it was a bit grubby. It was a little bit dry after because it's been summer here in the UK, and we hit sort of 28 degrees which is hot here okay <laughs> it might be hot, not hot where you come from but here we were absolutely sweating um and yeah so took it out of storage gave it a quick oil greased the um the axes on it uh, made sure all of all the um belts were tight and the bed was leveled and it was all dusted off and it came up lovely so yeah with this if you do take your printer out of storage make sure you give it a good clean good bed level re-lubricate it and yeah you should have absolutely no problems whatsoever and make sure your belts are tight on it as well. In the meantime, back to the video. Okay, with the bench you're printing out um, fairly quickly here, let's have a quick look and see what other stuff you can do with a USB connection to um, a computer, which you may not be able to do outside of that. Um, well, first of all, you can monitor the temperature. As I say, we've got uh, the extruder is happily sitting at 215 degrees and the build plate sitting there around 70, sort of fluctuating up and down because I've got a fan on at the moment because it's really, really hot in here. And it just keeps it um, as cool as possible. Now, first thing I like is being able to pause it from remote. So you click pause here and yep, bang, print pauses straight away. Now on my other ender, when I click pause, it puts it to the side and then waits for it to um, restart again. For some reason the basic ender when I click pause just stops mid print and starts burning a hole in it. So yeah, I'd recommend updating your firmware. I haven't updated the firmware in this in a while because the new updated firmware, when you click pause, it stops printing, puts the um, thing back into home and then waits for it to uh, warm back up again before restarting. But yeah, hasn't seen a damage of print at all and it's still printing out nicely. So yeah, pause works very nicely over a network. Now the next thing I want to try is, um, can you shut down Cura? Will it keep printing basically in the background or uh, will it just stop straight away? So um, let's have a look. Let's go to the little X here and give that a click. And uh, what's this say? Oh no, closing Cura, USB print in progress. And yeah, it will stop the USB. So nope, we don't want to mess around with that. So yeah, you can't shut down Cura. So yeah, if your PC crashes, I get the feeling you are in trouble. Okay, with that all done, Benchy is finished. Ah yeah, it looks lovely. Tiny bit of stringing in the cabin there, but absolutely nothing to write home about. It's smooth, it's shiny. There's a little dot on the side where I did the print pause. But other than that, yeah, it's absolutely great. So, let's have a mess around here and see what else we can do. Let's restart another Benchy, load up a Benchy in here, and see what else we can do uh, once we've got it uh, sliced and uh, ready to go. So there we go, and it's always set up for print via USB. So give that a click. Now, G-code. This is gonna be something I'm very interested in. So yeah, I'm gonna cancel the print. Yep. Now, G-Code is a fascinating one. 
you can input different commands in here and get the printer to do all kinds of interesting stuff. For instance, if I input this particular code, M turn os one turn o six S oh not O S zero one It causes the printer to preheat so it's now started preheating the uh, bed there so you can see basically the temperature is slowly rising on the bed which uh, is an automatic thing, but you can do hundreds of things with that. You can get the fans to start, you can get all kinds of stuff to, 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 to do all kinds of interesting stuff. Another cool function is you can mess around with the uh, jog position. So you can move the uh, the printing arm all over the place. Like you can click home here, so I give that a click. It's auto homes. Yeah, you can do that from uh, the machine itself. Uh, big wow, but what also you can do is once this is auto homed you can get it to go down like so and that go down to the uh, bed level and you can sort of mess around with it doing all kinds of things you can get it to, to jump left and right uh, just click the right button here and it goes goes up And there we go, you can get jump right and left and also get the bed to go backwards and forwards. You can pretty much control all the motion uh, of your 3D printer remotely. And yeah, okay, it's via a cable, but once you've got this thing on Wi-Fi, you'll be able to basically do all of this from anywhere in the world, which is really quite cool. But for me, the ability to stop a print from anywhere in the world and make adjustments is absolutely great. And I'm looking forward to messing with this more. So yeah, that's really quite cool. I mean, connecting a printer to a PC is not a new thing, but connecting a 3D printer and allow you to control it manually actually opens up a lot of interesting stuff. Being able to put G-code into it and get it to do all kinds of interesting things. It's just kind of the tip of the iceberg and I'm looking forward to sort of doing some research and finding out other things you can do with a connected printer. No, it's great being able to control a 3D printer from your laptop and be able to sort of adjust the X and Y and the Z Yes, I said Z. Thanks to the person who complained that I said Z the other day. Yes, I am British and should be saying Z. <sighs> Bloody pissants. But hey, next up I think will be a wireless connection. It's going to take me a couple of weeks to actually get one of these things ordered and shipped from China. So until then, I've got some wonderful news. I've been accepted by a company as one of their 3D printing testers. So I'm going to have loads of interesting stuff to show you in the next couple of weeks. So, thanks everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe, stay happy, stay safe, keep printing over your USB connections.